Well, I'm glad you think that you couldn't find a better provost because I have never loved a job so much as the one here at Grand Valley, and I want to stay. So thanks, Gleaves. That's it. <laughs> Please call Tom Haas. <laughs> <laughs> It is really fun to see all of you here today. This is the first luncheon I've attended since the, the group has been gathering over these years. And it is amazing to see that we really do just fill up this Regency room. It's very, very rewarding. The activities I know you've been doing have been really important to the university. I know they've been important in individual lives. But congratulations, Gleaves and the whole staff of the office, Mary Beth, for your leadership as well. This is a wonderful program for Grand Valley, and I just would like you to up your, your goals a little bit. I do, I do think just the nation, and, and you know, I mean, we could be the leadership university in the galaxy. So let's just do that. Well, you will. You will have a series of speakers this year, as you have other years. Thanks, please, for inviting me. I'm really honored to be here. And with a topic as big as leadership, I think you probably have a wonderful selection of areas of leadership that people will touch on. We have about a half an hour, maybe a little bit more for questions and things. And so there's not any time to talk about this huge topic in any great detail, but I know that the entirety of your program will do just fine with covering those. Bookstores are filled with books and DVDs of how to be a leader, what to do when you are a leader. You can read and read and read about leadership and sometimes get very good insights from those readings. Lots of the books are more about management, more about what the famous ones are always about, like how to deal with difficult people or you know, <laughs> stuff like that. Um, <clears throat> but when it comes to leadership, it's a little bit less operational and more visionary. It's a little bit less operational and more the big picture. And so there's a dividing line in those professional books about leadership and management and so on that you can recognize pretty clearly. And I think one of the things that I want to talk about today is how it really would be hard to write a book about leadership specifically. Because from my point of view, leadership for all of the books and DVDs related to that subject is largely a personal matter. That how one leads is a product of a whole life to date. And how you lead can change as you grow and develop over the course of your lifetime, hoping that you keep learning that whole time. So I want to talk about leadership from that personal point of view. And that is, how do you get people to want to work with you toward common goals? Simple definition. There are lots of definitions too, but I'm going to stick with that one. When I say that leadership styles evolve over time and are a product of your whole life, you know, as well as I, that conditioning as a little kid even, even just the gender, race, part of the country you're born in, influences you so much. And those influences are everywhere from cradle till now, whatever now is in your development at this point. All those together, if we're open to learning, can result in if we become a leader and how we lead if we do. And that's the kind of thing I want to focus on today. So if I had to give this, this talk a title, I guess I would say, Leader, Know Yourself. And that's where I'm going to start to ask, what are your values? And now I guess I'm talking to the students mainly, but since we have lots of leaders in the room, I think you can be great resources in these conversations as well. What are your values? What are your strengths and weaknesses? What are your preferences in human interaction? And so on. In addition to knowing yourself, you have to also understand others. Leadership is a lot about empathy, about emotional intelligence, awareness of social dynamics, those so-called soft skills. It's really hard to write a book about those soft skills, but there are some. Don't worry, there are some. 
How does your gender, age, race or ethnicity, sexual orientation, level of able-bodiedness, or other inherent characteristics affect the expectations of you that others will perceive? There will still be traditional expectations of who should and shouldn't be a leader in our culture, whether we like it or not. We all need to work with that. So knowing yourself, your place in the social dynamics and, and gender role culture of your world, knowing where you are in the generation you're in and how to deal with those and others, all of those skills will become important. But I still think it begins with knowing who you are. To illustrate this personal basis of leadership, I want to share with you some of my own experiences. I was saying to Provost Niemeyer over there, this is kind of intimidating because there are a lot of people in here who know me, and so I'll be talking about things more personal than I generally bring to work with me. But I want to invite Glenn and everyone else in this room to think about those same sort of things as we talk about the influences on leadership that I'd like to share. So for today, let's say you're a leader in an organization. You've mastered the basics. You know the knowledge of your field. You know the skills and requirements of whatever the goals are of your organization. You can communicate clearly. You're serious. You're dedicated. You work hard. And you're interested in the good of the organization. Let's just say that's a given as a leader. To structure our discussion from here, I want to focus on three things. First, I want to tell you about some of the influences in my life, just big major ones. I promise I won't get down to gossip or anything. And then I want to show you from those experiences what I think have been the influences on the way I try to lead. And I think most of the time think that I do lead. Second, and maybe interspersed with the first, we'll see how easy it is to talk together in this big setting. I want to invite you to think of yourself and do the same analysis as I'm going along. We'll take a little time to share some of your thoughts, and it could be while we're talking, feel free to chime in and I'll ask you for your thoughts. Or it could be in what we've set aside for question and answers. We may blend the two and we'll see how this all goes. And then third, I want to just wrap up by talking about why it's important that you have this information in mind in order to be effective as a leader over time. How knowing yourself helps you see what you can develop for even greater effectiveness as you move forward. So, I sort of divided up the influences I want to talk about into family background, formal and informal education, and work experiences, just to give some parameters to this whole thing. So first let me tell you about my family background, at least as far as my place in the family goes. I was the younger of two children and the only girl. They actually used to call me Gail Baby. <laughs> Don't tell anyone else. But it was a blue collar family. I had an absolute hero brother and he and I were the first to go to college from our, our families, and with no particular support to go. We weren't discouraged. We just never were encouraged. If we wanted to go, we'd go. And uh, both of us paid our way through and scholarship stuff and all of that. But our family didn't have the money to support us anyway, so it wasn't like they were withholding something. It was just not in their, not on their gaze, or in their gaze. My adult role models um, were unfortunately dysfunctional parents. We had um, abuse in the family, we had divorce and remarriage, and I took on as the girl next to the slightly older, a little bit moody, very serious boy, my brother. I took on the role of mediator, caretaker, pleaser. I smile a lot, right? I was the one who was supposed to be perfect and help the family figure out all these sort of twists and turns they were taking. So I got really good at listening, at mediating, 
reading the social dynamics of the family so that I would know what to do to stay safe. 